All right, hello and good evening. I'm Sarah and I'm currently an intern at the Estonian Institute of International Affairs based here in Canberra. And tonight we are fortunate enough to have with us our panelists for our event co-hosted tonight with the ANU Bell School on Myanmar's political transition. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me tonight. And so we're just going to have a bit of an informal discussion about you as academics and your involvement and engagement in Myanmar. Um, so first off, I'd like to just introduce who I've got here tonight. I've got Dr. Nicholas Farrelly and he is currently the director at the ANU Myanmar Research Centre and the director at the ANU IU um, at Pan-Asia Institute. And he's also a fellow here at the ANU Bell School of Asia Pacific Studies. And I also have over here Jacqueline Menager, who is a PhD candidate at the ANU Bell School for the, in the Department of Political and Social Change. And her focus is on obviously Myanmar as well. And I've got Chip Wynn over here, another specialist on Myanmar, and he's also a PhD candidate here at the ANU Bell School for Asia Pacific Studies. So I'd like to start tonight and just bring things back to the beginning. So how did you initially become involved and engage in Myanmar? I mean, what drove you to pursue Myanmar academically and follow its political affairs? So I actually became interested in Myanmar during my undergraduate degree here at the ANU. I actually went on a field course run by Nicholas Farrelly back in 2009. Um, and we travelled along the Thai Burma border, and I just found it really fascinating. Basically, travelling along Thailand and just seeing the sort of marked difference between Thailand and Myanmar by just crossing a footbridge at that time. Um, and I basically was interested enough that I started to do an honours, and then was convinced to do a PhD, which has turned out quite well. Um, and I think I've just continued to love studying Myanmar because it's just such a sort of a very interesting place to study. <laughs> How about you? Well, as for me, uh, you know, my name is Chitwin. Yes. Sounds like I'm from Myanmar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so naturally, I'm interested in Myanmar, the politics, the, you know, the transformations happening in, inside Myanmar. But since I'm at the ANU, uh, I'm quite engaged with Myanmar in terms of, you know, looking at Myanmar from the, you know, perspectives of this democratic uh, transitions, what are the changes uh, inside Myanmar uh, taking place. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And what about you? Well, I have the real pleasure nowadays of working with people like Jackie and Chip Wynn, uh, which makes my academic life uh, so much more exciting than it otherwise would be. There, there was a time when I kicked things off with my own engagement with Myanmar uh, when there wasn't much attention mm. put on the country. Um, it would be about 15 years ago uh, to this month that I first crossed the border from Thailand into Myanmar. And since then, I've done a bunch of research around the country. I've had the opportunity to meet so many people who are themselves um, part of this immense historical transformation. To be able to observe that and analyse it is a huge privilege. Yeah, because you're the director at the Myanmar Research Centre at the ANU. So when did that actually, how, how old is that? Is that a relatively new creation? Relatively new creation. So there's, there's been serious academic work done on this campus mm -hmm. focused on Myanmar going right back to when it was Burma, indeed right back to the 1950s. Okay. So in the early decades of the ANU's engagement with the Asia Pacific region, there were people here uh, putting a lot of their effort and energy into Burma studies. It wasn't though until last year um, that we came together as a cohort and determined that we'd establish ourselves as a Myanmar Research Centre, mm -hmm. uh, which has support uh, from the University High Command and draws resources uh, from here in our College of Asia and the Pacific. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I'd just like to know, like, so what is it in your opinion that is making Myanmar at the moment such a popular and really political topic? I mean, we've had to change venue locations due to popular demand. We have completely sold out now. Why is everyone interested? Like, why is it a focal point in international affairs at the moment, in your opinion, if you've got any on it? <laughs> Uh, I think, you know, in my opinion, uh, Myanmar is quite unfortunate, you know, since the independence in 1948, uh, we had a, a very long ethnic conflict until now happening. And and we also had, a, you know, entrenched military rule, as you know, uh, until recently we, you know, trans make a transition from the military rule. And also the economy, we had also had, a you know, uh, during this socialist rule, we also have a mismanagement of uh, economy. So everything was, uh, you know, quite a, uh, the story is not very nice. Mm -hmm. But things happening to change since 2011. And it, it is n no bloodshed there. And the, the speed and the, the breadth and the scope is quite big. So we, people start to wonder why and how that uh, happened. And also access to Myanmar, you know, uh, until recently has been uh, quite 
uh, not so much accessible. Mm-hmm. So researchers are not so much, you know, know what is going on inside. So when the Myanmar has an opening, I think the all the researchers, especially, they want to see what the country looks like inside. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Oh, how about you, Jackie? What do you think? Um, I think it's obviously interesting because it's not every day that a country that's sort of been under a military dictatorship for over fifty years mm. decides to open up. But I think that sort of what was going on behind the scenes prior to actually opening up mm-hmm. was really interesting as well. Like I think that um, you know, often suffers everyone assumes that this kind of one big monolithic state and one military that has one way of thinking, but it's actually quite a developed country. I think as far as its foreign policy goes mm-hmm. and sort of civil society. There's a great interest in actually opening up, so I think that once it sort of started this managed transition, foreign governments and foreigners kind of started realizing that Myanmar had something to say and was actually an active participant in its own development. And understanding that became really interesting. Mm. One of the other reasons that we're all so focused on Myanmar nowadays is that it's right in the front row of the countries that are going to be the most important in the Asian century. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's behemoth neighbours, India and China, um, of course exert a great deal of influence over all of us, Mm -hmm. um, but will be absolutely central to whatever happens in Myanmar in the decades to come. And Myanmar, therefore, as a crossroads of Asia, as a pivot, as a linchpin, um, is going to require a huge amount of our attention. And I think that's why some of us consider it important that we do focus whatever uh, of our analytical resources on the country we can. Okay, yeah, fantastic. And so, well, flowing on from that, then how do you as academics stay engaged and connected to the country? I mean, do you have, you know, connections with um, think tanks in the region or other, you know, how else How else would you, you know, have an idea of what's going on there and be able to get more of an inside perspective? Well, in this day and age, the great unfair advantage that we all have is the internet. Yeah. Uh, particularly now that Facebook has mm-hmm. absolutely gone ballistic in Myanmar. There's just so much material out there. You could literally spend every day of every year sifting through it mm-hmm. and you would still find endless amounts of material to deal with. Um, when it comes to the sorts of institutional linkages that we enjoy, um, it's so much more conceivable nowadays mm-hmm. just to turn up somewhere to... Um, make some introductions and to see what relationship might build. The the ANU, for instance, has some really strong ties with the University of Yangon. Uh, Some of our researchers have also been quite effective in working with Myanmar's new legislative institutions. Um, All of that requires patience and and effort and sustained involvement, Um, but I don't think it's quite as difficult as people often would imagine. Uh, and here I am, day in, day out, week in, week out, writing a newspaper column yep. uh, published each Monday in the Myanmar Times. Oh, wow. Okay. And I, I tend to write it from my desk in Canberra. Yep. Uh, of course, when I'm in Myanmar, I can infuse it with a bit of local flavour, but otherwise, um, it's a product of a very different sort of environment to include the environment we're in right now. Mm-hmm. No, I think that um, the media has definitely also improve, like aside from Facebook. I know Facebook is still one of like, the main avenues that I get information from. Even when I was in Myanmar, I remember there were a couple of occasions when I'd go on a visa run to Thailand and something would happen, and the quickest and easiest way to actually find out what was going on was just to Facebook some of my friends in Yangon. Um, whereas now, I think, this was kind of in 2010 now at least, there is media coverage of events, so something will happen and there will be something in sort of local media about it. It's sort of more... Uh, reputable now than it used to be and has better information and sources and whatnot. So I think it's yeah much easier now than it used to be. Okay. I think in, since the, you know the opening started in uh, 2011, you know people had a chance to speak freely. The media become uh, relatively free. So uh, we academics, you know, are sitting in Canberra can now get a lot of uh, information from uh, what's happening uh, inside Myanmar. And at the same time, as uh, Nick said, you know, that thanks to social media, uh, we can also engage with them, actually. You know, mm-hmm. uh, what we have written, we can also post it in, the, in this uh, social media like uh, Facebook. Uh, technology really enabled us to do that. You know, in fact, you know, uh, Myanmar, the mobile communication in Myanmar is now uh, in, in, it's increasing. It's, it's like booming. Uh, uh, a recent survey shows uh, Myanmar is the, you know, the fourth largest increase in terms of the mobile market okay, right after wow. India, what, China and US. So in within three months time we had five million new users. 
Yeah. Yeah. So the Facebook really enable us to do that one. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's always it's always Facebook. No, whether, no matter where you are in the world, it's like how you I guess access information these days. Um, well, obviously, all of you have had some incredible experiences both in Myanmar and relating to Myanmar now back in Australia. So I'd like to know. I guess do you have an, have you experienced any uh, cultural or language barriers in terms of understanding or engaging in Myanmar's domestic affairs? And if so, is there any ways to o- overcome them? I guess. Start with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, for me, culturally yeah. and language, well, <laughs> not such a problem for you then. <laughs> not such a problem for me. Yes, but you know, for anyone, I think who is engaging with the uh, academically to yeah. Myanmar, I think needs to be aware of the uh, the cultural sensitivity and also the the use of the the language yes. uh, inside Myanmar because you know uh, Myanmar language we have uh, in different. Uh, for different situation, you have a different usages, mm-hmm. so it do counts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's for. But if you are for a, like a you know a, like a, the big uh, a, a normal researcher, you know who is not doing a very in depth, that won't be a post a, a very big challenge. But if you want to deep down, yeah, you might need to consider uh, that one. And at the same time, you know, uh, Myanmar is also changing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the barrier, be- the language is, I think, becoming less. Yeah. Uh, people, are, I think, if you go to Yangon, I think they can speak English to, to UPEC. And also people understand also the outside uh, culture, thanks to uh, globalization. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank We've you. just recently appointed a new Myanmar language lecturer here at the ANU. Okay. Is, wow. Yeah. A wonderful outcome of mm-hmm. uh, some uh, advocacy on behalf of many academic colleagues over the years. And it suggests to me, at least, that the new generations of scholars coming through are going to have ever greater access um, to a culturally and linguistically rich environment. It's now possible to undertake a great deal of language study inside Myanmar, and Jackie herself has benefited from from that over the years. Um, It's also possible now to undertake field research in parts of the country where Burmese isn't the ordinarily spoken language and so there are researchers now doing a fair bit of work in some of the minority languages and that's only likely to increase in the future. I think it's a really promising trend. Okay. I think it's probably the main question that I get asked by sort of new PhD students is do they have to learn language first and I think it's really important to plan to learn a language but I think before you start study it's not necessarily um, important. Well, it's important yeah. as you go along. Obviously, it's a lot easier living in the country if you mm. can conversationally and get some more insight and knowledge. Get I guess more insight, but I think it shouldn't be a barrier to actually deciding to study Myanmar or to actually okay. go there because people I find in Myanmar speak more English than in Thailand, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as it's definitely easier to learn Myanmar in country than it is in Australia. I mean, now we have people at the ANU who can teach it, but um, yeah, I, I went there without very much Myanmar language at all got by. Um, it's a very welcoming place for that and people get really excited when you speak Myanmar but it's definitely not expected and it's not a huge barrier to studying there. All right. Well, thank you very much. And this is like my final question for tonight. And this is probably directed more at a younger audience. Um, so do you have any advice or suggestions for perhaps um, young analysts, university students, research graduates, recent graduates who are looking at perhaps pursuing Myanmar academically? Um, I guess you've talked about learning the language and the language options now available at the ANU, for example. But, you know, what, what other now career, uh, career pathways are there now that, you know, Myanmar is a bit more opened up as well? I think it's... You can choose pretty much anything. Mm-hmm. Just go and do it. Like, yeah, that's. I think when we sort of started studying it, it was a lot more difficult. There were a lot of barriers. There were visa restrictions. You couldn't travel. Now you can pretty much choose any part of the country, choose any topic, and just kind of make it happen. Yeah. So you suggest like traveling and just going and experiencing the country. Yeah, go and experience the country. Sort of just read widely. Decide on something that seems interesting, and you'll probably be the first one trying to answer that question. Okay. <laughs> and we'll all appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a. If you're if you're a young uh, academic, you know, uh, in a university, in, let's say in Australia, I think you might probably look at uh, what Myanmar would like in the coming four or five years time. Mm-hmm. What will it look like? And by the time you have uh, your PhD or master's degree, will it suit to your to the job openings inside in Myanmar, or how how will it relate to? So I'll look at from that perspective. With that, I think uh, Myanmar is now currently seeing a lot of changes in Myanmar. International community is also supporting with that. So I think basically what I see in the coming four or five years will be uh, we will need some uh, young academics who can bridge 
the international community in Myanmar who understand the local uh, aspect as well as the uh, what the international community wants. So someone who can bridge like that can be a I think they will have a very promising career path in international development organizations, foreign investment firms and think tanks. Okay, wow, fantastic. Thank you. There is an increasing appetite for people who know yeah. about Myanmar and who take the country seriously mm -hmm. and get past the superficialities. The only way to do that, at least from my perspective, is to take some risks, to do something that no one's done before, uh, and to set out on your own trajectory because Myanmar perhaps more than any other country in Southeast Asia at least, um, is still a work in progress. And nobody can say with utmost confidence what's going to happen over the next 10, 15, mm -hmm. or 20 years. And so academic researchers of all types are going to be having to, to get into the mix and do what they possibly can to explain what's going on. Yeah, and so you're seeing as well the annual growth in academics and people interested in pursuing Myanmar, I guess, right now? Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're just spoiled because we have such a wonderful group of students who are focused on the country, mm -hmm. to include all of our Myanmar students. Uh, Chip Wen is a terrific example of the talent that we've been able to welcome here to our ANU campus. Yeah. We're not the only Australian university that is benefiting from this current wave of Myanmar academic excellence. Um, but perhaps we have a greater concentration than anybody else. And, and for that reason, uh, this is a really exciting place to be. And yeah, what a time to be focused on this uh, incredibly friendly um, and positive country. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I think I might leave it at that. And so thank you all very much for your time this evening and for a great little chat. Um, I wish you all the best of luck for your panel. I know we're all very excited and been waiting for this event, um, focusing on Myanmar's political transition. Well, thank all right. you all very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks. For more information, please head to our website, www.internationalaffairs.org.au. Thank you.